Hello and welcome to our remote worship. We all in the Regis community know about remote. We might like it, we might not like it, but we are, it is something we need to use as, as well as we can. So this will be our remote worship for the second semester of 2020. Father Paul here from the Office of Ministry and Service. And joining our worship team is Dan Leahy, our director, Sister Carmela and Sister Mary, who are on the faculty of Regis College and our music director each and every Sunday for many years, Sean Gelsleiter. So we all welcome you to our remote worship. It's very different, but it can be very meaningful. And it will be available to everyone all day on Sunday to watch at your convenience, to take a few moments to sit down and reflect on the gift of worship that is ours. We're very happy to be a part of the community in a very different way, and we hope that you will be able to embrace this remote worship and join us as well. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Then the Pharisees went off and began to plot how they might trap Jesus by his speech. They sent their disciples to Jesus, accompanied by sympathizers of Herod, who said, Teacher, we know you are honest and teach God's way sincerely. You court no one's favor and do not act out of respect for important people. Give us your opinion then in this case. Is it lawful to pay tax to Caesar, to the Roman emperor or not? Jesus recognized their bad faith and said to them, why are you trying to trick me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that is used to pay the tax. When they handed Jesus a small Roman coin, Jesus asked them, whose head is on this and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. At that, Jesus said to them, then give to Caesar what is Caesar's, but give to God what is God's. We have all heard this gospel many times. When I first read it again a few weeks ago to start reflecting on it for these reflections, I was brought back to my first understanding of it, that Jesus was telling us that we had to make a choice between this world and God. Nothing could be further from the truth. Instead, I believe Jesus is reminding us that we are human beings who live in a particular time and cultural context, and that it is the values we live by that will determine to whom we give our allegiance. This is where Jesus lived, in the tension between God and this world. And it was this that caused the Pharisees and the Herodians to try and trap him. He went about preaching a gospel of love and inclusivity and spoke truth to power, challenging them to treat all with dignity, even though he knew he could be arrested and put to death for doing this. He had already predicted his own passion and death three times at this point. 
When the Pharisees and Herodians came to Jesus, they couched their question in compliments. Teacher, we know you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth and that you are not concerned with anyone's opinion for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Jesus saw right through their hypocrisy and gave them an answer they couldn't find fault with. He asked them to show him the coin that pays the census tax and asked whose image and inscription is on it. When they reply, Caesar's, he says, then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and repay to God what belongs to God. Our challenge is to discern what belongs to Caesar and what belongs to God. It is a call to recognize that we all belong to God and a call to honor the gifts God has given us, a call to honor our integrity and authenticity. Ultimately, it is a call to be true to the God who dwells deep within us, crying to be heard in these times we are living through now, the pandemics and the resulting suffering of so many, the upcoming election which has caused such division among us, a call to find the courage to speak out against the injustices we see. This is not easy, and sometimes we, I, stay silent, afraid of what someone might think of us, afraid of what will happen to us. And it is precisely here in our vulnerability that God meets us, calling us back to our truer selves, reminding us that our God is a God with us, holding us up in our most difficult moments, even when we don't sense or feel God's presence. In the words of Mara Clark, one of the missionaries who was martyred in El Salvador and a friend of mine, when she wrote home describing the atrocity she was witnessing, the killing of so many Salvadoran peasants, she said, I still believe that God is present, even in his seeming absence. In this gospel, Jesus invites us into the struggle, into the tension of living with and between God and whoever our Caesar is. Thank you, Sister Kamala. You uh, remind us of the many choices that were had to be made in the days of Scripture with the Herodians and the Pharisees, and those same kinds of choices are present to us today. And how do we deal with them? One of the ways in which we deal with them as men and women of faith is through our prayer. It is our tradition in worship to raise up our needs in our prayer of the faithful. So let's do that now. Usually we participate together in this event, but it's not possible in a remote way to do that today. But there is a way in which each one of us, as we engage in this prayer today, look at a way in which we are faced with many choices and how can our loving God embrace those choices and enable us to make good ones. So let's pray today in a, in a special way for our student community, for the challenges and the questions that are raised for them in terms of engaging in their college education, that they may find creative ways to respond to the gift of God's presence let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray in thanksgiving for the blessings that our school provides for us, especially the leadership, the administration, the faculty and staff who are working each and every day to make sure that the preservation of our university will continue to be a part of our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for people in our community, student community, faculty and staff who struggle with the pandemic from many geographic places and spaces, that somehow they may know the presence of God, the strength of family and friends, and keep in contact with those in the university community who are so much a part of their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And we have many uh, petitions and needs that we need to pray for, especially during the pandemic for those who have been sick 
and we all are aware of people who have died. So that those people who have been touched in that way by the pandemic may also know the gift of God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, and each one of us now adds quietly the intentions that are important to us on this day. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. Lord so loving and gracious God, we raise up these our needs. We raise up those that remain silently within us. We ask you to lend your ear, to hear us, to lift us up and to help us move forward, especially in the challenges we are called to meet each and every day. We make this prayer as always through Christ our Lord. Amen. So it's a great pleasure to be with all of you. We thank you for participating in our worship. We remind you that this worship will take place each and every week through the rest of the semester. And our remote worship can be very much a part of our community life. If you have any suggestions or ways in which you can see this moving in, in other directions, please contact our office at, at, at Regis. Thank you once again for participating and being a part of our remote worship. Thank you. 